Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory of Nigeria, was carved out from Nasarawa, Niger, and Kogi states in 1976. The territory is in the central region of the country, lying between latitude 8.25 and 9.20 north of the equator, and longitude 6.45 and 7.39 east of the Greenwich Meridian. The territory is administered by the Federal Capital Territory Administration. It is headed by Honorable Minister appointed by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The territory is made up of six area councils, namely Abaji, Abuja Municipal, Buari, Guagualada, Kuje, and Kwali. The population of FCT stands at 1,405,201 according to the 2006 census with an average population density of 192.1 per kilometer square. According to a report of demographic survey conducted by the Agricultural Department Project ADP in 2010, the migration rate to Abuja is the highest in Africa and is about 9% annually. With this projection, the estimated population of FCT for 2010 is about 3 million. 35 years on, the territory has witnessed a phenomenal growth in population and changing landscape due to physical development and utilization of resources. Despite these challenges, agriculture remains the mainstay of the territory's economy, employing about 70% of the active labor force of the population. It is in this regard that 576,000 hectares of the total 736,500 hectares land mass of the FCT is delineated for agricultural activities. The 2008 baseline survey conducted by the FCT MDGs in 858 communities reveals the earning capacity of families in the FCT as follows. 2% of FCT residents earn over 50,000 Naira annually. 50% of families in the 858 communities earn between 20,000 to 50,000 Naira annually. Another 39% earn between 10,000 to 20,000 Naira. Similarly, the baseline survey also revealed that only 2% of the FCT communities farmers have access to tractors or plow bulls compared to 89% that depend on hoes and cutlasses for their farming. To tackle these challenges, the Federal Capital Territory Administration, through its Agriculture and Rural Development Secretariat, rolled out various agricultural and agro allied industrial programs to boost production, reduce unemployment, and ensure food security in the territory. Some of the programs include the Root and Tuba Expansion Program, RTEP, National Fadama 1, 2, and 3 development programs, National Program for Food Security, Aquaculture Development Program, Establishment of Fish Farm Estates at Buari and Kwali, Establishment of Integrated Farm Center in Kawu, Buari, Grazing Reserve Development, Dairy Development Program in Paiko, Gogolada Area Council, and the FCT MDG's Community Empowerment Agricultural Initiative. The Agricultural Secretariat of the FCT is working to ensure that Abuja's farming populations adopt new technologies in the areas of crop production, fisheries, animal production, irrigation and farm mechanization. The World Bank Assisted Third National Fadama Development Program has already kicked off and has brought smiles to the faces of the people of Kekashi village in Abaji area council. 35-year-old Aishatu Jafaru has four children and is a stakeholder along with other women constituting the animal rearing group on this program. The small ruminants are kept here by the group and will be sold for profit in nine months. <laughs> She said that she, I think she's happy with this thing that uh, the Fadama people give them, give us. And uh, she's trying to thank the Fadama people that uh, the way that she helped us, the one, the Fadama people, I think, to help the rest people that remain again. KKT as a village, we thank God for the arrival of Fadama facilitators to inject us with the modern way for the materials we are trying to help the masses so that we can become self-reliant. In, in other words, we do have some groups, associations, organizations, but with the coming of Fadama, we vastly improve in most of our doings. Some of us are farmers, 
And you know, in the farming season, you have to farm for three months, six months before you start harvesting. Which, with this, there are some species that were given to us that in two months, you can dispose them and replace them with new stock. I will use this media to beg or request on behalf of the KKC people that if Adama will not take it so heavily, we will want them to assist us in fencing this territory for security purpose. Because as it is now, people can just come in and at the process of crossing, you stop them, they will say we are challenging them. The yet planned for us should reach us in good time. The Fadama Free Center in Kekeshi also has a poultry section, a demonstration fish pond, machine for shelling and feed making, and a low-cost bean production section. FCT Fadama programs have contributed 1,000 units of wash balls, which exposed farming communities to the technique of dry season farming using water from shallow wells. It is estimated that over 30,000 hectares of suitable irrigation land can be accessed using this type of technology. A total of 442 sub-projects have been successfully completed, ranging from agro-processing, livestock poultry, crop production irrigation, input warehouse, fishery and hunting. 195 projects implemented under rural infrastructure investment are cold rooms, borehole, borehole fish pond, borehole slab house, rural markets, drainage, erosion control, bridges, culverts, and input shops. The FCT administration has commenced construction work on the first phase in the establishment of an integrated farm center at Buari, which would be upscaled into a college of agriculture established to become an international center for excellence for training on integrated agricultural production and organic farming, just like the Songhai Integrated Farm at Porto Novo in Benin Republic. The center is projected to train over 1,200 young school leavers and build the capacity of over 1,000 established farmers per annum. Work has already commenced on the administrative block, hostels, and perimeter fencing of the facility. The FCT administration has sent two sets of uh, our staff to Port Novo, in the Albania Republic, to see how the Songhai farm is, so that we can have a similar uh, pro project in LCT. So in the Wari Farm uh, Center, the farm has been fenced. The hostels are under construction, both um, male and female hostels, and also the classrooms are under construction. And uh, we hope that once these facilities are provided, uh, a set of students will be sent to Port Novo who will now come back to Nigeria to be like teachers to those who will be in the Wari Farm Center. There is also the over 34 hectare fish farm estate about to be completed, located in Buari and Kwali area councils. Basic infrastructures have been provided at both estates. While development by prospective allotees is ongoing at Buari, the activities in the fish farm estate will be powered by this hatchery farm to promote fisheries development in the FCT. We produce fingerlings, which is meant to service both the farm as well as the uh, farmers within the territory and the uh, surrounding uh, states. To complement the efforts of the Agricultural and Rural Development Secretariat, the FCT MDGs, under its Youth Empowerment Program, came up with the Community Empowerment Agricultural Initiative to address the issues of poverty, gender equality, and sustainable development in the poorest rural communities. The project is aimed at improving farming activities, revitalizing economic activities in the rural areas by increasing their income level and improving living standards. 60 communities were targeted when the program took off, and after a successful outing, the program was scaled up 200% to include 120 communities. Under the program, the community provides 10 hectares of land and indicated the type of crops that they would want to cultivate, then seeds, pesticides, fertilizer, and working materials are provided by supporting agencies free of charge. My name is Douglas Afanel. I'm a student. I'm a 
part of this cooperative farming. And this the coming of MDG project has helped me a lot. During the time that I used to farm as a peasant farmer, I do have small harvest, but the coming of this MDG, I have yielded a bamboo harvest, and it has helped me in order to further my education. Previously, I do farm and have like 2,000 naira, but the coming of MDG, I realized 10,000 naira and above. So with the coming of MDG, I have a lot of benefits with my youth and my fellow farmers. We started the program last year and uh, we tried with 60 communities, that is 10 communities in each area of the area councils. With the success recorded, we were able to uh, be given additional communities. The program was scaled up with 200% communities. That is 120 new communities. Environmentally, 20 communities for area council. We decided to meet them in their communities. We started by calling them together. We visited them. We informed them of our intention, of what we want to do. Uh, some communities that we earlier selected said they are not comfortable with the program and they threw it out. Some of them accepted reluctantly and some accepted wholeheartedly. To us, getting, it, getting to 180 farms is part of our strategic objective. Uh, secondly, we are hoping that these farmers will contribute more significantly towards food security in the FCT and largely also support other states. Successes recorded in this program and other agricultural initiatives will ensure that income levels for 76% of FCT population whose earnings are currently below 50,000 Naira per annum would increase by 300% in the year 2020 if these efforts are sustained. Employment opportunities are also endless in the PPP concept 10,000 hectares of farm land for development. Only 3,000 hectares are currently occupied, but the economic window opened up is already yielding results. The project is an idea that came to the Federal Capital Territory Administration in an effort to tackle the problems of lands that are lying fallow. We don't farm them, they are just there. So the administration now came up with this idea to bring in investors to come in and farm this land so that we will have enough food here in the Federal Capital Territory and, if possible, export some of the products from here. This is a sample of the Jatropha seed. This can be used for aviation forest, even for the local kerosene stoves that are modernized these days. There are some that use this the fuel here. So it has different uses. And you have foreign uh, buyers coming in every day to get this. And these are things that were formerly lying everywhere around our houses. But these days we now realize the economic importance of this. The project is not restricted to plants like this alone. You have rearing of cattle you have fish rich, you have different things that relate to agriculture. We are not talking of just this. And if you have an idea of any foreign kind of crop that can be exported if farmed here in Nigeria, you can still come in and try it here. We have enough land. The government has was able to acquire about 10,000 hectares of land here for this particular project. And as I'm speaking with you, we have not even lived out up to 3,000 hectares. So you have nearly 7,000 or more still waiting. So you can still come in and invest here. Abuja's agricultural development initiatives are threatened by highly challenging but surmountable obstacles like erosion and lack of basic infrastructure like roads. 
The master plan of the territory provides 270,000 hectares of protective forest in recognition of the importance of forestry to climate change and its effect on biodiversity. But lumbering, firewood gathering, charcoal production, bush burning, and illegal hunting have imposed an ecological problem that requires urgent attention to avert a catastrophe. The challenge of sheet, real, and gully erosion has risen and is expanding at an alarming rate. Dangara community in Abaji Area Council is the worst affected with over 14,000 square meters of gully. In Gadabiu, a community blessed with resources for farming all year round, neighbors are being torn apart by erosion. In fact, we are seeing how the, the gully is now is affecting our houses and you see how it's even very closer to our buildings, our construction. If you go to our farmland, there are some places that even you see sand covered all the, the food items, all our crops, some of them the sun has covered them. The rate of deforestation in the territory is also alarming. Apart from forests giving way to infrastructure development, agricultural activities and human residential areas, there is widespread lumbering, firewood gathering, charcoal production and bush burning. This has reduced the volumes of the streams and rivers in the territory, resulting in the drying up of seven rivers in about three area councils. Also, climate change and the distortion of the ecosystem made the FCT experience seasonal floods with catastrophic consequences. Farmers whose farms are in the plains of the major rivers and streams within the territory suffer lots of losses due to the floods. In 2009 alone, almost 2,000 hectares of farm crops were destroyed by floods. Scarcity of funds in meeting these environmental challenges threatens food security. Therefore, to promote economic development and revitalize these rural communities, there is urgent need for massive investment in the agricultural sector for increased production and value addition. The FCT administration is requesting for funds from the Special Funds for Agriculture and Natural Resources Development and Ecological Problems to address these issues. A counterpart funding of 10% will be provided by the FCT administration and the area councils, while the federal government will contribute the 90% balance. 10 billion 770 million is required for irrigation program. Development of fish culture and fisheries resources requires 2 billion 841 million 261,818,000 naira. 3 billion 803 million 800,000 naira for development of 10 grazing reserves and stock routes. 28 million 800,000 for the establishment of dairy production and processing center. The establishment of farm and youth development centers will require 4 billion 360 million 697,193 naira. The construction of farmer's house, 1 billion 365 million 440,989 naira. Establishment of 10 modern abattoirs and meat processing centers requires 5 billion 580 million naira. And ecological interventions need 2 billion 948 million 554,020 naira. There are economic benefits to be derived from investing so much funding and efforts into agricultural development in the FCT. This intervention will triple the income of rice and other irrigation farmers in three years. It will also encourage more families to engage in farming. It is estimated that additional 250,000 families will be fully employed in a period of five years. Currently, the estimated annual fish production in the FCT is approximately 80,000 metric tons, employing about 30,000 fish folks. The intervention being requested would increase fish production by 300% in five years to approximately 320 metric tons per annum. At that level of production, over 10,000 fisher folks will be fully employed with an average income of between 250,000 to 360,000 per annum. 
the existing four grazing reserves in the FCT have an estimated herd population of 38,000 cattle with an annual milk production of 39,450,000 liters. This represents only 1.2% of FCT consumption, which is estimated at 3.3 billion liters per annum. The population of the FCT is fast growing at a growth rate of 9%. It is the fastest growing city in Nigeria with about 5 million people. 50% of this population are youths whose income will increase to about 400,000 naira per annum in the fifth year of the implementation of this intervention program. In addition to improvement of income, this program will avert youth restiveness, increase employment opportunities, and improve security of lives and property in the FCT and project the image of Nigeria as a competitive tourist destination and regional power block.